So we have our special guest, James, here from Mega Cat. And of course, you know, with the big release here, I was very excited when I saw this saw this uh, trailer and saw your guys' name attached to it for WrestleQuest. So for those that maybe don't know, can you explain uh, the Cliff Notes? What is the WrestleQuest game? <clears throat> so WrestleQuest is the world's first pro wrestling JRPG. So it takes all the all the high fantasy of like a Toy Story <clears throat> nostalgia bomb, but it's all through like a wrestling universe with a wrestling lens. So. Think of it as a Toy Story meets wrestling with like hardcore RPG mechanics. That was the interesting thing that like getting into it because it was just like, oh, these are toys. Like these right. are wrestling toys looking up to the real wrestlers, right? Right. Like that was kind of like an interesting um, uh, uh, angle to take on things. A lot of reasons for it, but um, I'd say like we really wanted to explore like insane over the top like parts of wrestling. Like we wanted Andre the Giant to be able to pick the ring up and break it in half. We wanted mm-hmm. the Road Warriors to have like a like a Mad Max like vehicle. We wanted gimmick matches to be extreme. And we also wanted to have a, a lot of liberties to keep it family friendly. So we have things like analogs for steroids, but in our case, it's <laughs> super glue, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and we were able to just really merit like what we really wanted across the player base by using these, this toy based um, kind of exploration. But, you know, when we first started this, you, you asked me at the very start of this prior to that, the actual uh, podcast kicking off, Mike, is this the same game that we were talking about years ago? And, and it is because when we started looking at how do we create a unique visual identity, how do mm-hmm. we make it feel and look unique, um, part of the exploration was if you're making 32 pixel height characters, how do you make them stand out in a world that's had 30 years now of <laughs> retro wrestling games? So that's actually when we stumbled on the toy opportunity. Is For a lot of our friends and colleagues we were interviewing, to kind of take their temperature on it, we realized a lot of them, their fondest memories of growing up with wrestling with the toys. I'm like, I'm like this might be the unifying opportunity here. So yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I can't, can't believe that it's out sometimes since it's been four years in the making. And oh yeah. Just so much content, so much, so many challenges. <laughs> I just realized I'm, I'm in I'm in make your entrance mode right now. Uh, <laughs> I've been I've been rolling through this little by little. I've been going. Would have had a few minutes here. Uh, so uh, yeah, and, and and I love that because I, I guess it gives a reason for that little style, right? You know, you're not the wrestlers aren't being uh, 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 weirdly. F- you know, I'm thinking what was it WWE? You know, 2K Battleground a few years ago. I, you know, Mike and I I think debated a little bit on how everybody looked a little too giffy. I love the style of something mm-hmm. like that. I love the take this thing, make it a chibi wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people like the realism kind of idea, right? So like I, I love that kind of that kind of that kind of take on something like this. So so tell me about like like you've you've some pretty big classic names in this as well. Like, you know, and I know, you know, we've seen like Retrocade come out in the last, no, Retro what Retro Mania. Retro Mania, thank you, come out in the last few years. Uh, uh, has a lot of the, a lot of the, you know, interesting classic names mixed with the indie new in, newer indie wrestlers and everything like that uh i know l- listen I, I think i entered your office one time and saw a giant uh, uh hulk hogan picture you know mm-hmm. in, in in the meeting room i knew i was in the right place uh so so how was it trying to like kind of connect and, and and getting uh uh you know some of these old names I- involved in something like this yeah it's definitely been uh, some of the least fulfilling adventure i'd say <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to make sure that we're um you know, there's a few things about how we managed talent that I think is just really unique. Like I know, factually, we gave them significantly higher royalties than they've ever had in a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also gave them the opportunity to actually get close to production. You have to imagine a lot of these guys in their 60s and 70s <clears throat> don't really have a big love for video games. But yeah. they're also at a, at a phase now in their careers that they're really not given a ton of um, significant opportunities beyond WWE, both because of their their expectations commercially and like the reverence they have for their brand and their management and whatnot. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun because we've been able to spend a lot of time actually working closely with folks like Jeff Jarrett or Sergeant Slaughter. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, Sarge went with us to San Diego Comic-Con a <laughs> ton of great days together. And he's, uh, <clears throat> he's probably one of the more interesting like personalities we ever get a chance to work with too. And he's, you know, he has the GI Joe background mm-hmm. and the wrestling background. So as you walk through that, the, that that's amazing. You're, you're doing a, a, a an yeah. action figure based video game yeah. with a walking GI Joe. He's the perfect, <laughs> he's at the intersection. You <laughs> exactly. Know? And he actually gets quite a bit of screen time in Russell quest, but mm-hmm. we have an area there called the glory fields that kind of pays homage to the idea of like in different toy sets, 
like there's like a military toy set that extends beyond wrestling and how do mm-hmm. we you know how do we put you know Sergeant Slaughter at the the middle of that but you know it's definitely been a, a ride making sure that we're <clears throat> diligently doing everything that the estates needed or that the the current wrestlers have and making sure that we're being respectful to like WWE's properties with costumes, colors, stories, and all mm-hmm. the other pieces that surround it because it's not as simple as yeah, we're working with Macho Man Randy Savage. It's like um like we can't touch King Macho, right? You can't you can't right. touch certain color combinations and certain logo Interesting. Uh, interpretations and do, do you get like you know, I I remember working with some corporate companies and you kind of get a style guide. Do you get like kind of an anti-style guide of trademarks more, or something mu- like that? It's much more complex than that. Okay. It's, All right. We actually had to hire two separate uh, law firms to specialize in oh, video game trademarks to help interpret it because it, the really natural path would have been we actually just do a double license through WWE mm-hmm. and then they could sublicense it out. And in hindsight, probably could have saved a couple gray hairs doing that. But, <laughs> <clears throat> and actually, the, the original concept was for us to license it through the WWE. Mm-hmm. And the person who was running licensing then ended up moving on to the NFL. And uh, we kind of got lost in the shuffle along the way. So that's how we ended up just going ahead with our own our own vision to kind of make it come to life despite the limitations there. But, um, man, it's been, a, it's been crazy. It was architected as a way to have our, our love for RPGs and wrestling both addressed because they've been on our company wish list for a long time. And I guess the, um, the origin of that's like, we always want to make a wrestling game. Mm-hmm. We always want to make a JRPG. We thought this could be interesting because not only the and, storytelling. And, and this is your first, first JRP. Technically, like, we've done some other games in the same space, but never this mm-hmm. size. Uh, for those who don't know, like you, you know, you have a track record of, of several game releases over the years. Can you can you can you share with the audience that, that don't know about you guys? Like, what kind of games that you're usually playing? Yeah, on? I know, I know. The, 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 James is a serial entrepreneur uh, and has a lot of fingers and a lot of pies <laughs> here. We'll just put that there. But video games is one of the one of the well, actually, a lot of them are very interesting to me, at least. But for the case of this show, uh, you know, what, what what other kinds of games? you guys put out before this you know it's funny uh mega cat's been my 90 percent focus now for 100 well, percent of the last three years mm-hmm. so we, we, i sold two of the other businesses and mm-hmm. one of them i ended up um, kind of downsizing to a fractional effort but <clears throat> we've released um 73 games the last last six years and um quite a few of those games have been worked for other people for for hasbro atari mattel and nickelodeon and then separately we we do quite a bit of our own retro games. So if you look at our website, <clears throat> you'll see tons of uh, authentic retro cartridges for mm-hmm. Nintendo, Sega Genesis, things like that. And then what we call indie retro, which is things like Russell Quest or Coffee Crisis, Log Jammers. So we've explored maybe 20 genres at this point, but all different levels of sophistication. So like a casual roguelike, like we released a game early this summer for Renfield, the Nicolas Cage vampire movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> And it's a unique take on uh, on, the, on the genre because it has this kind of bullet heaven, they call it, um, auto roguelike mechanic. But roguelikes take many permutations depending are you more risk of rain? Are you nuclear thrown? Are you, you know. And, so, and roguelikes, for those that don't know. Roguelikes are, in Nindy's case, ours is like a top down like shooter with mm-hmm. the, the roguelike elements are all procedurally generated and kind of randomized pools of locations, areas, weapons, um, modifiers, enemies. So every time you kind of roll the dice, you know, logically, not, not literally, uh, you're going to get different <clears throat> modifiers for the enemies, different levels, different mm. outcomes. And um, you're not playing the same game twice, basically. And, it's really kind of. And also, you know, test your skill. It gives you unique skill gates. And, you know, we had some great headlines for that game because you know, the game, the movie didn't do so well. So we got some interesting headlines. that said It like, was a very fun movie, though. I totally. loved it. So, so I by the loved way, it. I think the, I think the movie is going to be like a cult classic. I think yeah. it's going to find yeah. legs later. But it's uh, I know it's on Peacock last I knew. So mm-hmm. I highly recommend it if you guys are out there on, on Peacock. Well, if you're watching wrestling, you already got Peacock. So just yeah. go do this. And I'm a big Nicolas Cage fan. Oh, yeah. Somewhere on our bucket list. We knew we wanted to do a Nicolas Cage something. So. But, but the Renfield game was interesting because we got a lot of headlines saying, like, hey, by the way, if you don't like the movie, check out the game. It's better. And it um, <laughs> wasn't my dream outcome. But oh, just like Wolverine o- Origins. That's right. Yeah, yeah, okay. But basically, it's um, it, it's been a journey. And as we gotten deeper and deeper into Mega Cat, um, we try to find the intersection of, like, a, we'll call it, like, accessible retro. That if you're a busy dad or a casual gamer mm-hmm. or you're a crazy hardcore, like, speedrunner, pro gamer, 
there's something here that has skill checks and accessibility that's just fun at a basic level. So we try to tap into that. Like, would we want to play this game? And it sounds really simple, but running a business built around like games that are very passion driven that have a commercial opportunity is like a massive effort all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and games are a hit based industry. It's like if someone sat down and said, Hey, you play guitar, make me a hit single. And, um, <laughs> what is it? it well, so it's like, it's like, you know, any art, you know, you do the thing cause you love it right. and hope you get the thing that helps you pay the bills with it. Right. It just, your thing takes many developers to, to yeah. pull off versus a, a single artist, musician, right. et cetera. Right. It has all the rigidity of software and all of, the, <laughs> and all of like the complexities that come with like, you know, the teams. Yes. You know, WrestleQuest has uh, you know, 70 people that worked on it. Like it's a, you know, it has a 60 hours of critical path content, you know, 80 if you explore deeper and it's, you know, just the word count. Yeah, just the writing. Words. Yeah. Like, it's like, like two years of writing, right? Yeah. It's like two novels worth. It's just, um, yeah. there's just so much goes into it, but it's, you know, it, all those fantastic promos uh, that you get to pick in the right. promo battles. <laughs> you you got to love all it. All those names that you have to make up. Dude, yes. th th there's 500 names. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it, just for some of the NPCs we made up. But, it, you know, it's um, it's easily the most fun we've ever had. And we Is this the biggest game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? We've definitely overscoped it. We could have. In hindsight, we probably should cut the content in half and just had it be like content over time. But yeah, we just loved it too much, man. So you're just like almost want to put this out for everybody to jump into. Yeah, and we won probably 20 different independent show awards, best mm -hmm. in show, best gameplay. So we kept running these features, and when the team's vibing, when they're loving it, and the fans are loving it, which is really yeah. your indication of like is this going to work. So we just kept going, and um, someone should have at one point grabbed like the cartoon cane to be like, why don't you just call it here? But <laughs> um, we're happy with how, how it came out. We're doing a ton of uh, post-launch quality of life updates, and we have some big news we hope to announce in the next six weeks, mm. some DLC plans. So Okay. There's a lot there if you're a Russell Quest supporter. There's a lot coming. That's nice. That's nice. It, it, and also, multi-platform, it, 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 I was amazed to see it was on basically everything, yeah. including, like, like, the Netflix thing surprised me as well. You know, so, like, that's... I, and I know, uh, Mike, you've been playing it on the Switch, I think, right? So... That seems like the perfect thing for the Switch. Yeah, I'm kind of loading on mine right now, but yeah. I was playing there right before we were uh, big starting up, up. Big Switch update coming next week. We actually have some of the new quality of life features that go. are rolling over from... Nice. Look at you showing off, dude. Nice Switch. There he is. There he <laughs> oh, is. Yeah, yeah yep. I was in the middle of a match when we were starting the podcast, so I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll just cool it off here for now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Then I get my ass kicked. Are you in Jungleaji? Is that the location you're in? I saw uh, you. No, I was in the um, oh, the Dead Drop Hill. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, my my world's been crazy the past couple of weeks, but I've been trying to get my gaming in when I can. Yeah, but yeah, we were talking about that those time constraints uh, earlier. So, but this is like the perfect thing that like if you guys switch or something like you can just pick up and play a couple matches and project yeah. a story a little oh, bit. When, that's... when I'm at New York Comic Con in a week and a half, that's that I'm going to get some serious time in. Oh yeah, because I'll be waiting on law lines. <laughs> That's great. You better be wearing, sporting your Macho Man shirt, playing WrestleQuest, in line for I don't know what you're in line for. That what's your Danhausen for sure. Danhausen? Perfect. Sure, probably perfect. Sure. Side note, just because we're on video games, I saw that. First of all, I, I doesn't mind complaining about the AEW game. I never know when DLC comes out, and I didn't know Danhausen was released. And you can pull them out as a weapon <laughs> from. They under, didn't know when DLC came out. Yeah, before. exactly. Apparently, um, and they could pull out Danhausen from under the ring as a weapon, and it will attack you. <laughs> so. No, it's fantastic. Um, but okay, back to your game. Um, so uh, you get you got it together. You've been doing all these awards. How's the response been since uh, it's gotten in the, in everybody's hands, including <laughs> including Mike over there? Yeah, I mean, last week we had more um, more reviews and more more hype than we had since even launch in, in late August. Great so numbers I've been seeing so far. Holy crap! Yeah, it's it's a constant. The wheels turning. You know, it's like. Mm -hmm. um, the way it normally works when we release a game is you, the two months that follow the release are actually harder than the release mm -hmm. because you're suddenly getting like hundreds of thousands of eyes and ears and, and emails and fan mail and Google voice phone calls. And it's a, I'd say the most engaged people are either your super fans or your super trolls and they're going 1v1 face versus heel <laughs> to see who can get 
if you can get the, the corners of the internet with you, but it's, yeah. you know, we've been just taking the, the feedback in and putting together these, you know, fan servers, quality of life and feature roadmaps. And every time we've um, dropped a patch, there's been probably five patches since launch. Um, there's just been this like consistent pulse of wrestling fans showing up, which, you know, we get turned down by <clears throat> many publishers for this game. Everybody who brought the game to basically said <clears throat> there's no audience intersection between the blue collar wrestling fan and the the RPG white collar like you know thought, thought player and it, it's, what? it's a recurring thing and it's funny because <clears throat> you know everyone knows there's a big wrestling audience yeah but, but because it has never been explored outside of like CCGs and simulation gaming. It's not proven. Anything that has rare oh, air. Well, they, gonna... They've literally advertised for like Final Fantasy games on WWE, haven't they? Isn't so there's a gaming something? audience crossover. But yes. I, mean, I, I guess the way I'd look at it is this. Like, WWE is a marketing partner. Checks a box. Yeah. But a non-WWE licensed. How do you push it? Project yeah. in a genre that's never been explored. Yeah. Like, are we talking to too many audiences? Are you talking to a wrestling fan? Are you talking to a JRPG fan? How much do they intersect? Yeah. Are JRPG fans going to be let down because there's not enough dungeons and there's not enough like traditional medieval high fantasy? Like, it's, yeah. There are a lot of questions on the audience segmentation that you know, we paid for a Nielsen research study. We did tons of audience Jeez. breakouts. Like We did endless number of our own like uh, focus groups and attempts to kind of validate there's an audience here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and finally, we, we met the, um, the Skybound folks Walking Dead, Invincible, and um, one their creative director at the time, who now is with, an, with another company, he was a massive wrestling fan. So we got his attention early, and I said, <laughs> "That's a that, that, that's that's <clears throat> like who's the wrestling fan in the company that has some pull, right?" That's right. And I remember <laughs> um, in our follow up a few weeks after the pitch, I'm like, "By the way, we did sign like Macho Man under the Giant Road Warriors, mm-hmm. Jeff Jarrett, Booker, you know." And, and I remember bringing the list out and showing them the art of like the action figure aesthetic and the way we are using the IP in a unique way and um, fitting this autobiographical storytelling while also like establishing this like really high, high fantasy, really playful nostalgia bomb. And he was like, okay, this is a crazy prospect, but how about we just, um, here's the new terms we're going to propose. And they gave us terms that weren't, they weren't the terms we loved, but they were like the terms we had of one person who was willing to like um, support the go to market, which allowed us to focus on carrying the risk for production and then building, the, you know, the dream game we wanted. So that was just the beginning of the journey. We, in the end, we thought it was actually the end, but uh, constant hurdles to hop with <clears throat> legal. And at one point, you know, we had some two wrestlers in the game that ended up selling their estates to the WWE, which we mm-hmm. couldn't have predicted. So we had to retroactively yank out a ton of content. And since it's a story-driven game, <clears throat> not the same for us as yeah, you got to rewrite all that. Yeah, it's not the same as yanking <laughs> out a character. Like you know, yeah. Yeah. If I would have made a simulation game, we could have just hot swapped it and been cool. Here we go. But <clears throat> in our case, it was a pretty significant multi-month effort each time. And then <clears throat> by the time we got to the end, um, we were just so done with the estate wrangling and the uh, yeah, the wildness of some of the <laughs> some of the wrestlers. <laughs> we're like, can you guys just behave for like six months before <laughs> we finish this? And well, that sounds like hey, so it's like you had a business version of what I deal with on indie shows all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know, it wasn't for. Um, for Jeff Jarrett, I don't know what, what I, we would have done. You mm-hmm. know, he was like a constant, constant cornerstone of like mentorship of. That's you know. a, so, and this is, and I keep hearing that constantly. For whatever we think of Jeff Jarrett, seeing him on our TVs every week, He's the best, you know. Dude. But yeah. like, I had a great experience business wise with him for a brief stint. Um, yeah. I have several friends that have worked with him on projects, including going back to the was that Global Force Wrestling. And I hear nothing but good things from him on the on the on the business work. Side <laughs> Dude, he's things. a stud. It's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, how about this? Like, um, one of my favorite experiences about WrestleQuest was the fact that as you became acquainted with talent, yeah, and you could really really get to know them, there was this um, brothers in arms kind of validation that if you're friends with X and you pass their sniff test, the next mm-hmm. one was very easy. And, and uh, <clears throat> I thought for sure there'd be some polarization around you know Jeff, third generation promoter, like. Mm-hmm. And, and there wasn't like every single talent we'd meet just like loved Jeff and it didn't matter the generation or the background or and it didn't matter. If they were like, um, you know, Sergeant Slaughter legends or they were mm-hmm. indie folks in the come up. The Jarrett's were, were be- known and they were beloved or what they respected, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's like everywhere Jeff would go to, like he would just draw fans. Like I would say that Jeff was the, he was the de facto standard for what became our executive wrestling producer because he can look at the business lens. Mm-hmm. He can look at the wrestling knowledge. He was deeply respected by all the talent. 
and he, he can help manage some of the um, the crazier parts that you only get to do if you're behind the scenes a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, he might be the biggest wrestling fan I've ever met. And I, I like have so many team members that like live wrestling. Yeah, but he can outmark any of us. And that's the best guys. That's the best Dude. guys in the business. Yeah, crazy man. and girls yeah. in the business. Absolutely, I love it. Well, let's take a, l- a little quick of a breather here, and I, I kind of want to get into the game and show off a little bit, and you can kind of walk us through what's going on with this stuff. But in the meantime, uh, if you're tuning in with us, you know we like that we we love wrestling so much. We like to film it on the weekends, and uh, a lot of that stuff's at indywrestling.us. We actually got a big uh, big weekend coming up next weekend. Here uh, in October, we're going to have a double a double feature streaming. Uh, our friends at Renegade Wrestling Alliance, as well as uh, Victory uh, Victory Championship Wrestling, I forgot what the C was, um, are both going to be streaming the same weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, not this weekend, the next weekend. I don't remember the dates off the top of my head, but uh, uh, look forward to that. I know already signed uh, friends of the show, John McChesney taking on J-Rock at RWA. Uh, and of course, uh, I, they're going to have, um, they're going to have Ricardo Rodriguez at VCW, uh, coming up here and a few other big surprises, uh, looking forward to that. So go check all that stuff. You support, uh, indie wrestling.network, or if you're a part of our YouTube members over on, uh, over on the indie wrestling.us YouTube, you can check out those shows live when they come up here next weekend. So, and so much stuff, uh, going on there, uh, new releases, new VODs for, uh, revenge pro wrestling in the last month, including the main event was Bill Collier against Katie Arquette. And it was, uh, it was something. It was something. Go check that out. A lot of fun shows uh, coming from Erie and the like. And, of course, uh, um, all the great content that you love over at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of free matches dropping up here soon. And, and also, we're starting to put uh, a lot of matches over on the Facebook as well. So uh, keep an eye on that. If you live more on the Facebook than the YouTube, uh, we have a lot of our friends from 880 matches are going to be on there. And, of course, we're live every Thursdays with Thursday Night Fights as part of our apprentice program. So let's get into this. I, I guess I'm a little. I'm still only like hitting tutorial stuff in this thing. I, listen, man. Is, you got 15 systems. You can't. I got 15. Si- yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't. Mm-hmm. Where where am I going to go with this? So I I'm in uh, I'm in the snow level here. I think I I'm I'm, I'm I think it's my first tag team match actually. So I, I love this. La- so what is I, I okay. said that I played the 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 TNA uh uh. uh old phone game so that's mm-hmm. like my first rpg experience with this you know kind of things and i'm not an rpg person so menus kind of baffle me sometimes so you go in here i want to set up a strike here oh wait i gotta pick my pick up who i'm who i'm attacking uh was that heige boy lars and <clears throat> Flor- Lars and flars is who i'm fighting here yeah we got, we got the higgy boys here so higgy boys higgy's like a <clears throat> like a metal lifestyle, all about comfort. So they're wearing incredibly comfortable sweaters, and they're they in, look comfortable. Yeah, they're in the Great North. You know, and my part, tag, part of their gimmick. And my tag partner is a moose with a hockey stick named Stag Logan. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're, so we're Brink, he's one of the, the notable Canadian wrestling families. You know, mm-hmm. f- fifth generation. Stag is his tag team partner. You can't get more Canadian than a moose. So we just mm-hmm. wanted to bring that to life here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so this is actually your first boss battles. The way we represented boss battles in WrestleQuest. Well, everything we call it the wrestlefication of the JRPG. So everything here is like um, has a wrestling analog. So instead of using a key to get through a dungeon, you get a table spot token. We spawn a table and you slam an NPC through it. That's how you get it. <laughs> right. So like your boss battles are main event matches. So this is a main event match at a, a northern promotion here. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a territory system in the game. So each area of the map is a territory. So in this territory, Brink and Stag are your workers. You know, and uh, the, the, the Higgy boys here, Lars and Flars, they're like a big draw. So you're, you're doing the job right now. You're putting on your event. And the way that that takes place is there are the spots. That's how the match you have to hit. Um, you hit the high spots. That's part of the script. And that's how the, I'm going to say the character has skill gates to teach them new abilities and mm-hmm. also challenges them to, you know, kind of like... Um, have some agency around. Are they going to be a healer or face? Are they going to follow the storyline? Are they going to take their own path? And you know, some of these uh, these boss battles are purposely. He just he just, took, he just take a drink of hot chocolate and slam it on the ground. Yeah, he's incredibly comfortable. <laughs> yeah, his, his whole gimmick is deep comfort, right? So deep comfort. So we have like um, we have a lot of gimmicks in here that we tried to explore, and kind of paying some homage to you know some of our favorite silly things in wrestling in the eighties and nineties, and mm-hmm. then 
some things that are like on trend now that are culturally culturally relevant that if there's an, an independent promoter somewhere that's wondering about like is there a deep comfort tag team opportunity can i play this <laughs> and it's um <laughs> you know there's just a lot of fun coming up with some of these pieces because uh, our community helped support quite a bit of it but mm-hmm. you know four years of uh, of effort we every trade show every person we met along the way plays a role somewhere in mm-hmm. this yeah are you looking forward to the day that somebody's uh because uh, you know there's a lot of ripoff gimmicks out there in wrestling uh, uh are you, you would you be amazed if there's a Lars and flowers looking dude i hope so big sweater like is this is this your calling cord to like independent wrestling to please steal our ideas a little bit it's, it's funny because <laughs> one day into the game being out someone sent us a, a few links of people like pirating our t-shirts um, oh yeah i loved, loved like some of the fake promotions we had invented and okay like that. and then you know, we have trademarks for our main characters, like our muchacho man, the lochador, and things like that. And and we had um, maybe two weeks after, we had someone send us pictures of this like third party, you know, effort to make a line of wrestling action figures that ripped off several of our designs. <laughs> no way. And I was like, I was like, first of all, I hope they sell them and I can buy one because this is dope. Uh-huh, <laughs> and, uh-huh. and like, uh, and then at the same time, you, you think to yourself. Um, I'm so glad that someone likes this enough that they want to pirate this and make it. But like, God, I, I wish we would have had our own action figures, mm-hmm. you know, but mm-hmm. in the end, um, we'll leave those things to Skybound. We're just here to make the games. You know? <laughs> there's some, there, there are definitely some licensing opportunities here, right? Yeah. I you, mean, you know, there's a, there's been a significant number of independent, probably 50 independent promotions over the last year and a half. Um, we actually just did a cool activation with the premier wrestling folks. Mm hmm. And, um, you know, we can't turn a corner without some other wrestling fan saying, hey, by the way, like, what if we did X and you do Y in the game? And then we have to break down, like, I don't know what your production costs, but here's what ours costs and here's how long it takes. So if we would bring this to life, mm-hmm. it would be hard for us to find a way to both you know, mm-hmm. make the make the skill balance out. And in most cases, they're like, well, it doesn't matter. Please, let's do something. <laughs> 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 so we found some really unique ways to work with some of other you know, friends and colleagues we've met across independent wrestling. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, is, is there any, um, you know, uh, you know, not to give away stories or deeper in the game or anything, is there, are there any big surprises to seek out for people that are playing this game that the, you could share to like that, that they're going to make people want to kind of get deep into this game? You know, you have to, um, you have to imagine that with 150,000 words, there's a lot of Easter eggs packed in here, but, um, I say one of my favorites is like halfway through, there's a hair versus hair match. And one of the, one of the opponents is a, is a sheep and, <laughs> and I want to spoil it, but he might get sheared. Right. Okay. And it's like his, uh, the art representation of that sheep looking kind of like sulking with his head down, just like. <laughs> His coat's been sheared. Yeah, it's just one of my favorite images our team had created. It just cracks me up still. And we have a, uh, we have some fun stuff happen- happening this year in, in November for um, <laughs> for some mustache based activities too. But, oh no! <laughs> you know what's funny is like um. So is, is there going to be like seasonal content like that? Happening? We have we have we have some drops. It's just yeah, like yeah. Um, you know right George, now we're. I, I don't, I don't know if you got to the date the DDR version. Oh, the mini game. <laughs> yeah, you got into that. You know so um. The, the, the genesis of that, by the way, so there, there's a mini game where Muchacha Man, our core protagonist, you know, he's a independent wrestler, mm-hmm. training man, trying mm-hmm. to pay the bills, trying to make the come up. Sometimes he has to make some questionable decisions to make income. So there's like a strip club called Twisties where he <laughs> basically has to do like a rhythm game to entertain the other toys. Um, and he doesn't actually take any clothing off, but he really gets going with the moves. Mm-hmm. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, we... We had uh, run a poll with our community, and we had a ton of people vote for it. And we sent out the GIF of it, mocked up. Then we had fans just going crazy. Uh, people, people love rhythm games, you know. Mm-hmm. But something about watching that action figure shake his hips gets people going. I've had, <laughs> I've had crowds around Trade Show Boost just like, clapping for it. I'm like, why are they into this wrestling game? So mm-hmm. not, you know. But it's been so satisfying watching all of our wrestling people rise up from the woodwork because. Mm-hmm. You know, so many publishers closed the door and so many people just came saying, it's not really the perfect fit. Like, choose your path, wrestling or JRPG. You mentioned the TNA game. So a casual RPG, it's definitely different. Mm-hmm. Like, um, a, a true JRPG has to have a depth of progression to retain yes. players over a significant number of hours. Like, we have 
12 playable characters. We yeah, have a, it was like a simple like flip phone game or something, yeah. right? Which, so like they were doing like the most they could and just like you could do the moves by picking them and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I love casual games. They fit, they fit a role in my life too, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, like the, the biggest risk in the project is that like JRPG fans are also like very, very dedicated to the craft of what they love. Mm-hmm. And there may not be a more vocal like subset of genre enthusiasts and like JRPG because it's so personal because there's the, the storytelling and the depth of content. If you don't hit it, hit it, they will just tear you apart. And I'd say that some of the most satisfying things we've had is having like major JRPG influencers like mm-hmm. seal of approval, cover it, put it in their multi-million user audience things and say, I recommend this game. It's great. And uh, it, I, I can still feel like the team swelling with enthusiasm when we get coverage because God, games are hard, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you're basically making them in a vacuum and you're, yeah. you're just praying that the fans love them as much as you do and you're mm-hmm. making all these decisions based on like, we make games for fans. We don't make games for ourselves. You just want to make games that ideally hit both. Like, can you make mm-hmm. it something you love mm-hmm. that fans love and how, how far down the fan path can you get to validate and see through all the feedback? Because like, mm-hmm. you know, most of the feedback we get in WrestleQuest these days after these first couple of patches have been completed is really just around like people wishing that their favorite wrestlers were in the game. I'm like, guys, we license like 50 wrestlers. Like, <laughs> like I hope that there's enough commercial performance here that we can catch you in the sequel, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. there, there's definitely a no lack of love on our side for it. And it's, it's very likely we do a sequel. I certainly can't commit to it at this point, but <laughs> we've had such a crazy amount of enthusiasm for it um, on all corners too. Like local press since the first game we've had, we actually got coverage from, every paper, Pittsburgh mm-hmm. magazine. And it's like, uh, certainly not moving the needle, but we don't get a lot of coverage here in Pittsburgh for mm-hmm. games. They don't cover game companies. There aren't many of us. There's like you and Shell. Yeah. Right. It, it, I that, mean, that, exactly. that's it. And, and Shell's mostly known for the VR games. Right. So it's right. And if we put up a, you know, it's funny if I put up a job ad for the Pittsburgh office, 50% of the applicants think I'm catfishing them as on a real job. <laughs> because like there's not a games industry in Pittsburgh. There's like yeah, Shell yeah. and there's Mega Cat and Shell gets Which them. is weird because there's like there's a tech industry here, right? Yeah, but our, our tech industry historically is, is newer than other facets still. Absolutely. And then gaming is this weird intersection between art and technology. So right. it's almost like, you know, um, it also has quite a bit of a bad rap because it's like, hey, gaming, good luck. It's crazy because it's, mm-hmm. it's all hit based. You know, it's yeah. like making games that are commercially performant and also can stand the test. And we're hearing about the big companies having problems. So. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, uh, and customers, they don't care who made it. Yeah. They don't care if you had 50 people on it or 5,000. It's Yeah. They don't care if it's a, a million dollar budget or a $50 million budget. All they know is that here's their favorite things in that genre. Mm-hmm. Here's the memories they have playing it. And if you mm-hmm. can't hold a candle to it, you know, eat it. So, <laughs> you know, we have a game coming out pretty soon that I'm cringing thinking about because the budget was miserable and it was with like a major gaming publisher. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling the team when we signed it, we're going to do our best. We're going to push the limits of it, but it's not actually up to us on whether or not it's well received. The people directing the game, mm-hmm. you know, like they have to take some of this responsibility because if you make a game for $300,000 and you're competing against people that make the same games for $30 million, mm-hmm. like, you either going to be a miracle worker <laughs> or you got to set expectations in some other way. Cause it's, just, it's just not possible. It's like, it's like anything else. It's, but you know, I've, um, I'm just so glad it's over and it's out. <laughs> it's like, we have, we have, um, so many things have happened during the start and the end of like our, our company's grown 10 times the size. We've, mm-hmm. we've changed like internally significantly, like new departments have sprung up and, and been adopted. And we've, you know, kind of continued to raise the bar of what we want into our, the quality of our games and the size of the games. And we just, um, Russell quest ballooned with that growth, um, to the point that we, we really should have cut some of the content out earlier, but, <laughs> but it's like, we just wanted to serve the fans. I, I love right? you're sitting here telling me like, we put too much content. in. This. Well, it's, it's the truth. It's yeah. like, you know, look at every game in the same genre. We, at that price point, we probably have double or triple the content of everyone else mm-hmm. in the same comps. And, um, mm-hmm. and, it probably it's actually we actually got a Steam review recently from someone who was fatigued by completing the game because <laughs> they were finding it entertaining enough they couldn't stop. But um, at one point, one of their characters that they fell in love with ended up having a, a bad heel turn, and uh, oh no! And, and they were like heartbroken by it. We got like a the equivalent of like love hate mail from them. This multiple page letter of like, so I'm an hour sixty two, 
I'm just finishing it, and I wish yeah. you wouldn't have done X to Y. And oh, it's a, wow. and it was just, just real serious. I, I think I, I'm like, so I just looked up how, how to beat, how long to beat .com, and this is labeled as like a 50 hour game. Yeah. I didn't realize. And, and, and if you actually explore the side quest, it mm. pump it up even further, man. But it's wow, that's like that's like uh, that's up there at like Assassin's Creed level. That's Dude, crazy. And, and it really and it, like, and it took me two years to beat Odyssey. <laughs> so yeah, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully this doesn't happen, but. If you do get like pneumonia or something, you really commit to a solid oh, week. You can get yeah. it done, dude. Well, see, I was hoping <laughs> I was hoping to play it on the six-hour plane ride home last mm-hmm. night, and then I realized, oh no, I need to log into Netflix to make this work, and I don't have internet. <laughs> you know what? First of all, the mobile experience is not the way to enjoy it. But okay, what I could do as Good an note. exception is I could give you a like a dev build to give you some extra extra smooth sailing. We get some auto pin, oh, okay, and, you know. Okay. Cause there is like a, um, there's actually some accessibility options that everybody has in the retail version. You can turn mm-hmm. on auto pin and you can basically streamline and buff your character with the story. So what? if you want to play the story version, you can kind of, you can kind of enjoy the story without having to really put all the work in. That's usually what I pick. Cause I'm like, I don't have time. Wait, there's an auto pin. Yeah. There's an auto pin feature in the settings menu. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and you've had on. access to this the whole time. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's not too late. And it's actually, late. we have a, a big patch coming up for Switch that's it's currently on deck. It's on Steam Live already, mm-hmm. but also has auto QTE, so you can you can skip all the QTEs and they, they can all be automated. And it's it's funny, like all these trade shows, tons of positive reception, and then the game gets released, and there's this incredibly vocal minority that just hates quick time events. Mm-hmm. I'm like, guys, we've literally given panels with like standing room only of people talking about how it was fun to keep it engaging and how yeah, much they love it. Yeah. it. Reminds them of Super Mario RPG. And then there's this uh, contingency of gamers that are just like, you put a QT in the game. <laughs> you know, and it's a, <laughs> got it, the hate and the vitriol. And I'm like, guys, I'm so sorry. We can put a toggle into it, but give us a few weeks. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, we have a couple customers that I'm, they're really dedicated, you know? But yeah. it's like, there's one person I'm thinking of right now that just every day, it's it's messages on every platform checking status updates. I'm like, my friend, I promise you, we'll get a personalized email from us the moment the patch is live for you. Wow. But it's like, but it takes um, it takes weeks for but Nintendo you don't to have. A patch. But it's a beautiful thing is like you're you're still a smaller developer yeah. that can answer those emails. Dude, it, like it's, that's it's a, incredible. It's a like, job. Yeah. It is the it is the indie wrestling of developers. You know, on that level, oh, yeah. right? It's like I mean, I mean, I don't get to have a chance to talk to a guy that ta- that worked on Assassin's Creed, no doubt, so, <laughs> which is yeah. probably the biggest game that I play that isn't like Street Fighter or, or WWE games or something, uh-huh. right? So like, like that's that's still incredible. It's pretty awesome. It's the it's the era of indies, you know. Yeah. Like uh, we can self publish and bring it globally. The games, you know, localized in a dozen languages. It's it's like uh, we actually. It's funny. We have a fan that runs a Russian wrestling magazine <laughs> that volunteered to rewrite everything in Cyrillic. Um, you know, just for a copy of the game because it's on his bucket list to bring a wrestling game to his country. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, how do I say no to this guy? Right? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's awesome, man. But the wrestling fans showed up in such a big way for us. Every good. event, good. You know, we had a wrestling ring at PAX East this year in Boston. And we put on our own indie show at the video game event, and we nice. had we, multiple times like shut down PAX East because the wrestling fan just showed up in such a big way. And every time we took a bigger wrestling risk, they they were just show up again and it's been um it's been such a crazy good experience so because i remember this happening with phil sunger games and i don't know if you did this at pax east would we be able to see maybe sometime in the future a feature wrestling show with these characters represented yeah so you know it's funny um we've now had two different independent promotions we've gotten right to the one yard line with and something gets stuck with um with legal or Mm -hmm. you know we have it's crazy to even say this out loud. We have a legal team now. We have three lawyers. We want one that's dedicated full time. And it's like, <laughs> you think like, why would this independent game company need like full time internal counsel? And it's, there's just so much going on all the time, Mike. <laughs> like I don't know how to say it. Keep, just, that's the that's the keep me out of trouble fee, dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude, no doubt, man. And it's like I, I I wish for an easier time in my life back in, when we first started. But yeah, I'm yeah. telling you about this before we made the game. I'm like, bro, we're gonna make this wrestling game. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, no, I, I I remember a, a lot of conversations. <laughs> like, what if it's this and this? And it, and and I'm. It, it's really cool to see a lot of those early ideas make it into the game. Yeah. What if it's this and it's about this and then you know it's about like like coming up and training and, and running a show and stuff and just like well, that's a lot <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and and it's a lot <laughs> and and holy crap it's good to see you on the other side of this wrestle quest <laughs> is available on all platforms 
basically, let's say every significant platform right now. <laughs> PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC, mobile. There you go. Man, that's I, a... I, I will say the quick time events I liked them when I first started but now I'm like oh, I, just, I just I just want to get through it I good, want to get through good it good news dude it, it's coming to all platforms it's already been launched I'm, I'm excited man. for it I'm excited there you go hot news hot news there for you did patches like and, 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 I, on the record it's not as easy as just adding a patch like you make the patch oh, yeah then sure. we test it because it, it's a mm-hmm. 60 hours of content thing right so mm-hmm. now now someone's job for multiple weeks full time because they're doing laps mm-hmm. is just playing Russell Quest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we submit it to the third party certifications and then Nintendo has their third party engineering firm touch it. Mm-hmm. Then they're internal. And then they schedule the canned release and they say, hey by the way, now that it's been six weeks, like here's the dates we can release it on. Let me know when you want to release it. <laughs> so like this entire time that we're answering all these customer service messages, I'm just praying for Nintendo to get back to me, dude. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. Never oh, as easy man. as it seems. But. And wasn't there also like a thing uh where you wasn't there also a thing where you guys had to delay the launch because you guys discovered a bug with the save feature like at the last moment too? Yeah, so we had um so we had two specific things happen. One <clears> that we we haven't gone deep with that will be coming out new soon, but we signed a really great deal for WrestleQuest um for for I think for fan service, for new content um that we wanted to have as a press beat that we thought we'd be able to include at launch and because of that that company that's Jap- Japanese leadership and some comms issues they wanted to delay the announcement of that press beat, but initially we were going to be able to include some of that at launch. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the actual genesis of that delay. And then the second delay was we were doing final device compatibility checks for mobile. And there's a company that did all the mobile porting that wasn't us. And they uh, got a report back for Netflix and there was just like a ton of issues. And we're like, guys, we, we can't deal with this. Like, what are we going to do if we release mm-hmm. this thing that we've worked on for this many years and now all the, and in, in the end, um, Netflix agreed to a new date. We pushed to the new date. And the mobile experience is still a mixed bag at best because with mobile games, there's so many nuances mm-hmm. of device compatibility and testing. that, mm-hmm. uh, And we didn't do any of that. And it's Android and iPhone, which which makes it more complicated. Dude, and it's yeah. like, um, and the game is like, it's a, it's pixel art, right? But it's also giant maps with tons of gameplay so like all that mm-hmm. stuff still needs to sit in memory somewhere mm-hmm. so it's just been uh and especially if you have lower end iphones lower end androids dude, i yeah. can't imagine i was like maybe i should install this on the cheap android that i got for the business phone i'm just, just like melt, melt your phone after. i was like <laughs> and i was like why is this taking oh no this is a terrible mistake <laughs> i would say that uh, the best experience right now by far is on steam playstation mm-hmm. xbox and that order um, Switch definitely needs another patch or two. Like mm-hmm. just, um, you know, particularly if people want to play on Switch Lite. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's all like very late game nuance stuff. None of it. There's no critical issues. There's no like gameplay blockers, but. You're not cyberpunk. Totally. <laughs> there's there's some nice <laughs> Oh, no, no. It's, yeah. it's absolutely playable. I'm just I'm just excited for uh, the quick time events. Yes. Away. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll send you guys some free that, stuff. That'll, that'll, make, yeah. that'll streamline everything. There you me. go. There you go. Well, thank you so much. Uh, again, check out WrestleQuest. Support our friends at MegaCat. have been also, uh, always really great to us here at Sorgatron Media, and we really appreciate it.